Hi guys, welcome to Movie Spy for another interesting episode, The Walking Dead, Dead City. Maggie begins by planning while staring over a forlorn Manhattan. She's certainly experiencing an emotional roller coaster. We learn right away that her son, Herschel, has been stolen and is being held captive in Manhattan. The fundamental premise of this story is simple, she wants Herschel back. So where does Negan fit in? Well, there's a settlement named New Babylon in Manhattan's surrounding region, and Negan has been reverting to his former ways. We find that he's gotten into some difficulty with the locals, and they've set a reward on his head. The whole thing has a strong western flavor to it. We're not sure what Negan has against the residents of New Babylon, perhaps there's some history there that will be explored in a later episode. We also meet Ginny, a little girl for whom he acts as a father figure. He genuinely cares for her. Negan's wife, Annie and their child are seldom mentioned, which I thought odd. Their connection played an important role in the last season of The Walking Dead, but it has been sidelined for this program. Maggie inquires briefly about them, but Negan quickly changes the conversation. Again, I anticipate indications regarding what happened later in the story. For the time being, the program is keeping its secrets close to its chest. Maggie seeks Negan out because he has previous familiarity with Herschel's captive, a guy known as the Crow, a moniker derived from his Croatian roots. The Croat, it turns out, is a former Saviors member who has established his own village in Manhattan. Negan recalls the individual as an exceptionally insane son of a bitch. Maggie's motive for having Negan assist her is understandable. She feels he still owes her for, you know, their history. She also pledges to grant Negan's new buddy Ginny asylum in her town, the Bricks, while he travels with her. Negan agrees, but he doesn't have much of a choice. Maggie and Negan's relationship is progressing just as we predicted. They still despise one other. Negan even throws a few jabs at her from time to time. You have to like his one-liners, which abound throughout the debut. The program doesn't let viewers forget about these two characters' terrible background. In fact, there's a complete flashback scene showing us Negan's horrible background of killing Glenn. Maggie's dream depicts the flashback, demonstrating how she is still suffering from the after-effects of that heinous incident. Jono is a deputy for the New Babylon Patrol who is kidnapped by Maggie and Negan and joins them on their trek. His involvement was little, but I liked how much Negan teases and toys with him in traditional Negan ways, such as threatening to toss him over the edge of the boat. We don't get to spend much time in Manhattan in this episode, so I'm guessing the turmoil will have to wait till later in the season. Having said that, we do witness them sail away to the island since all bridges and tunnels were demolished straight away at the start of the apocalypse as a precautionary step to control the zombie virus. The location of Manhattan is the show's true MVP thus far. It's so different from everything we've seen since Rick awoke in Atlanta. The deteriorating towers, the swarms of walkers, the broken bridges. It's a feast for the eyes. I really enjoy the scenario in which walkers fall from the tops of skyscrapers. Yes, it truly pours on walkers. What's not to love about this? However, they are not alone in Manhattan. They were pursued by some new Babylon patrols, who were still close on Negan's tail and intrigued about who Maggie was and what she wanted from Negan. The patrol's leader is a bounty hunter named Pearly Armstrong. Pearly is a classic western badass, in my opinion. I'm excited to see how his story evolves now that he's set to be a series regular. They get into a fight at one point, and Jono is finally slain did he not serve a purpose after all. Furthermore, Pearly is hurt. We certainly can't criticize this episode for a lack of action. We also got a quick glimpse of the Croats. He is holding Herschel captive in a Manhattan skyscraper. He exudes real evil feelings, being stoic and unexpected. He doesn't only have Herschel as a prisoner. There's one guy, all torn up and battered, who tries to flee by zipline. He would have fled for good if the Croat hadn't cut the line, causing him to fall to his death. I can't wait to see more of him. Thanks for watching.